Welcome back everyone, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our Let's Play of Divinity Original Sin 2. Before we left off last time, we were going to head into the last of the tombs. I fixed the toolbars on Losa, but I haven't done it on Fane yet. We'll get to that eventually. The hymn twice winged keeper, song from stone to dust. We've already listened to that hymn noble four. And now we play the waiting game. But the actual thing to become openable. There it is. It's spooky sounds. There's not even a door here. Nothing. There's got to be more to it. Let's go talk to the doorkeeper, Brother Morgan. The spirit of a young robed man paces the chamber anxiously. He sees you approach. A look of trepidation crosses his spectral features. Did, did my order send you to cure the child? I ask what the child is mentioned. She's in need of a cure? Some, some form of demon seized her and nested inside her mind. She cannot speak or move. We did what we could to help, but we could not risk provoking the beast within. We can find her here, until a way to safely remove the demon can be found. It was my duty to watch over her, but I was never relieved of that duty. She has no family that we know of. All she had was a pet cat. That poor girl's life is drifting past her, thanks to that demon. Nobody sent me. Are you aware that you're dead? The spirit falters, momentarily lost for words. Finally, he musters a nod. I was hungry and thirsty for days. Then I rested. When I woke up next to my corpse, I thought I was delirious. I hoped I was delirious. But eventually, I realized what had happened. I want to try and help the girl. Her cell is just over there. I can let you in. But are you sure you can help her? What are you going to do? Are you sure, the spirit, that I'll figure out what to do? But he has to let me into her cell first. My brothers were confident they could help her as well. But they still had to lock her up here in the end. <sighs> but nobody else is coming to help, are they? I'll let you in, but promise me one thing. Whatever happens, take her away from this place. Far away. I agree. The spirit can't help but smile. I knew you had good in you. The moment I laid eyes on you. Come, I'll let you in. Take good care of her. Bring her somewhere peaceful. Don't disturb the demon within her. There's no telling what could happen if it breaks free. Alright, well, let's see what we're dealing with here. She is chained and shackled. Door is open. There is a cat, of course, named Buttons. Let's hop down here. Maybe don't hit the cat, though. Let's talk to Buttons. Get away! Do you hear me? Away! I won't let anyone hurt my mistress anymore. I asked the cat for permission to approach his mistress. I growl that I'm taking a closer look. Oh no, wait, that's not what we should say. Oh, it's the only one we really have. We don't have very good finesse or intelligence. I'm taking a closer look regardless of what the cat says. It'd be better if it just stood down. The tension eases out from the cat's skeletal form. It sits. Go on. I'll be watching. You have a remarkable loyalty, even in death. Mistress saved me when I was a kitten. She took me in, fed me, and kept me warm. She deserves loyalty. I won't leave her side. Not until she wakes. My heart stopped beating, and my flesh fell away. No matter. I'm staying here. You are a very loyal kitten. Alright, let's see what we're dealing with. That's a giant teddy. Oh no, our sword broke. Oh, it actually broke, broke. Uh, Alright, well, we're using... Not that sword. We must have another one-headed weapon somewhere. I used it to bust too many walls down. Oh, we don't actually have any one-headed weapons? We have a practice sword. What about this mace? This mace is a weapon. Done. 
I don't know if it's as good as the other one, but the other one is now nothing. The young girl lies silently on the floor, eyes open and staring. Her only movement is the tiniest rise and fall of her chest. I take the girl's hand in my own. Her fingers seem to grip you ever so slightly. I whisper for her to be strong. If she can't be strong, then you're here for her. The girl's grip tightens. A flush of color spreads across her previously bloodless features. She's grown stronger. Strong enough to move, perhaps. I teleport her to the Lady Vengeance. And that takes care of that. Mistress is gone. I can still smell her. She must be near. I'll find her, no matter how long it takes. Why can't we just bring the cat with us? It seems kind of cruel to like teleport her mistress away and then just like leave the cat here. I don't want to smack the ghost of Sir Loras or Sir Laura, I should say. It's still there, Quercus. Do you think it'll ever leave us in peace? I'm sorry, Sir Laura. I didn't mean to get you killed by Deathvog, but it wasn't my fault. You ran in. At least you're still technically alive, I guess. Alright, that was the last of the ghosts. I guess now it's time to kill the Advocate. Not an easy fight by any measure. Die quietly. How satisfying. Okay, first of all, we're gonna go get some source power, because we're gonna need it, I think. Let's send her first. Who is it? That one. And back we go to Fane. Now it's Fane's turn. Between this video and the next one, I'll fix Fane's bars too. Because god, they're annoyingly bad. Alrighty. So what are we dealing with here? We have... The Advocate, of course. We have a dog. We have Can two people over here. The twisted pain. I think there's one person over here somewhere. Oh yeah, right there. Astan the Wishmaster. And one on the other side, Arpka the Elemental Knight. So it's going to be an interesting fight, that's for sure. These two should be fairly easy to knock down, they have very low armor. He's a little bit tougher. I mean, we can start the fight by teleporting someone really far away. Like the dog, for example. Once it patrols back. Nope, that was too far. Or we could teleport one. Actually, you know what we could do? We could teleport this guy away. Although he is kind of in a weird line of sight area. Or this. Well, that dog's just over there. Eh, we should just go fight. That one's possessed. We'll just do this fight. Somehow. Level 15, eh? Alright. How do we want to do this? We could start with just a tentacle lash, I guess. Knock down like 500 armor. What the hell's a vacuum aura? I mean, that hurt, but not too bad. That didn't hurt very much either. Alright. What does Vacuumora even do? Suffocates nearby characters and attempts to silence them. Okay, we need to kill him fast. Because that sounds really terrible. Is that blood? No. Maybe?
We really, really need to kill him because a vacuum aura will be devastating for our characters. Well, he's knocked down at least. That does help. Oops. I wasn't thinking properly. That's fine. I forgot I changed her bars. I was just going off of muscle memory. Which is not ideal. I'll haste her so next turn she can do more. The advocate's knocked down this turn, so that's fine. It's possible we can kill the advocate next turn. But this is gonna hurt. We have ruptured tendons. Oh, we have uncanny evasion, don't we? Yeah, I'm almost certain we do. We should use that. Possibly this or next turn. Also door to eternity. Our magic armor is gone, which means we might get silenced. We are silenced. Everyone's silenced, which is bad news. So... Step one, let's just do that. Dogs attacking our incarnate. Luckily a lot of our skills are War Master skills. And don't really care too much about that. Our suffocating has worn off now, so we can actually use abilities again. Uh, we are going to use... How much AP do we have? 2 AP. So Door to Eternity is an option. Make sure our incarnate sticks around a little bit longer. Oh, go away with the silences. Seriously, that's annoying. Still left to fight in here. Okay, so there's a dog right there, the stalker. Or we can fight the rogue, which might be the better choice. Well, we can throw this at the rogue. He's decaying now. And then we can punch this one in the face. Oh right, the elemental knight. Oh god, the firestorm grenade's gonna hurt. Not as much as I thought, though. It's impossible to see anything that's going on in here. Alright, go over there and get ready to fight that guy. Ooh, that hurt. That's a good knockdown position. Bane's taking a beating, but he's okay for now. He's gonna need like a shields up or something. Which of course is not on his terribly organized bar. Oh, he's still silenced. Um... I mean, I could just hit this guy, probably. Or... Is he blind? As well? He absolutely is blinded as well. Charge through as far as you can. Go hide over here for a sec. I really should have made him some poison potions. Actually, if I get him out of combat, I can teleport him away to heal really quickly. Oh, 
Alright, Losa is alive and well for the moment. That guy's knocked down and hurt. Let's encourage everyone. She does have a knockdown available. And that guy has no armor. Can we get into range? Maybe? That's a hell of a lot of damage. There we go. Oh, it didn't die. He should die from the fire. Let's finish that one off. We're gonna take an AOO. Ah, he only hits for 400, that's okay. Knock him down. Bane, you need to get out of combat. Run over here. Oh, excellent. Good. Now he can heal really quickly. So if we just... Where's my bedroll? Should be here somewhere. Oh, there's my broken sword. And then we can just use our thing to come back into the fight. He'll be at the end of the turn order, of course, but good enough. I have wings, and I'm going to use light, which isn't on our bars because I didn't have it available at the time, to get over here. Why? What the hell? I must just hit this guy. There we go. Weird. And we're just gonna start killing that one. Bane's full life and full armor, so he's much more capable of standing toe to toe with the elemental knight. Oh no, our incarnate's gone. And that one stood up in time to do annoying things like shoot Losa. Back into melee you go. It might try to run away again. But if it does, you should be able to kill it, I hope. Now let's start peeling the armor from this guy. Oh, this guy's armor is fairly low. Now we should be able to knock him right down. And we're good to go. One. Two. Three. He'll stand back up. Don't care too much about that. Hmm. Oh, it's not on my bar. We're missing one ability. I just realized. We'll put it uh, by reactive armor. Gotta make sure he's a chicken. That one's dead. This one should be dead. But it might not be, so I want to make sure that he's not able to attack. Let's get over to the chicken. Finish it off. We have one guy left. Ooh. Alright, fight complete. We have killed the advocate and his cronies. The elemental light had a lot of life. The advocate probably has some decent gear. Yep, he sure does. Nothing on the stalker. Ooh. Oh my, look at that armor. 
I mean, if it was one-handed, it'd be better, but... Plus two strength, plus three constitution, plus ten water and earth resistance, plus one two-handed skill, plus one retribution, plus twenty-five movement... Twenty-five movements, I should say. That's going on somebody. Because... Yes. And now we can talk to the tree, which is in pain. The tree's spirit embraces its putrid host, an elven ancestor lost to the same demonic disease that infests all of Blood Moon Island. Qui manducad omnio myrdos ex, it quos potest etse. I reach towards the spirit. Perhaps I can divine its secrets. Your hand passes through the spirit to rest against the corrupted ancestor. It is rough to the touch, save the pustules dotted across the bar. Yet, there is nothing to divine but rough bark and swollen pustules. You cannot say which elf spirit inhabits this tree, or how it came to suffer its second death. I try to communicate. What happened to it? How can I help? Nin ect mehe, elgo pertidi ex ombre en mehre. I'll try with Fane. The tree's spirit embraces it. Qui manducad omnio myrdos ex. It quos potest etse. Impossibly, the words are alien to you. Demand it speak the common tongue. Nin ect me. We can try one more thing to try and communicate with it. We'll throw on our helmet and turn into an elf. I think I hit the lizard one by accident, though. The tree's spirit in Queen Mandukad. Hmm. I guess we don't know its language. Interesting. Well, we'll go talk to Jayon and see what we can discern about that. I might have to look up how to do that tree. I can't remember exactly what we need for it. It has been a very long time. Let's go tell Jehan the demon is dead. How fares the hunt, my friend? I tell Jehan the good news. The advocate's dead. I killed him myself. He smiles brightly and pulls you in for a short, if warm, embrace. Most excellent, Losa. Most excellent. I know how twisted the paths can get. How much more alluring the sunny glade than the rock-strewn hollows. But you know it's the darkest roads that lead to light. It will be the nature of my lesson, though, might be somewhat different from what you expect. I can deepen your bond with the Source, but you must realize that this bond comes at a cost. All life, after all, sustains itself by consumption. Like the grass feeds the herd, and the herd feeds the hunter, so you must feed, for instance, on these. He waves a hand to the cage in demonstration. I scoff and say very much, I very much doubt that there's source to be had from these void creatures. Don't let their less than inviting appearance mislead you. Just like the slithering worm feeds the high soaring bird, the abundance of source in these demons can expand your own. Through demise, a chance of divinity. Sure, I'm ready to go. Then let us begin. Jahan's incantations befog your mind. All of you is thumping blood, pumping, pumping, pumping. Then all you hear, then all that <laughs> is, is screaming. From the cage to you, their blood in your ears, screaming. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> that is all. Their sons have set to serve a greater dawn. The world awaits your true awakening. You are very powerful already. A master of the source. But I did not let this burst of power go to waste. 
It lies condensed on parchment for you to read and learn. He hands you a book, hot to the touch. Ooh, a Inner Demon is really good. I thank him for his lesson. It was inspiring. My pleasure. And so we come to the second part of the plan. Follow through, and I will endeavor what you desire most. The exorcism of your demon. You see, the demon that you killed, the Advocate, he had a master. You might say the Advocate compared to his master like the pussycat compares to the tiger. It is the tiger I am truly hunting. The self-same tiger, I suspect, that has been haunting you, Losa. Now, don't you worry. I have no intention of sending you after this arch-demon. There are few enough Godwoken as it stands for me to force them into any real danger. The one thing I would like you to do for me, though, is to return through the mist to the Isle of Blood and uncover there his name. I'm surprised. How can the demon inside of me be the same demon he hunts elsewhere? Some would call this blasphemy, but a truly powerful demon can be somewhat like a god, omnipresent. It can manifest itself in several places and several people. I noticed the familiarity in the thing that possesses you from the moment we met. What I hunt and what you seek to be rid of are one and the same. But our desires are futile. They are hollow unless we can learn his name. A demon's true name is its weakness, which is why it basks in being known by a thousand different aspects of its inmost self. But such dark magic was wrought upon Blood Moon Island that its inmost self must have been there in its true guise. Exposed so that it could wreak ultimate havoc. That is when its name must have been spoken. And when spoken, heard over there among the blood. In the darkness of the ruins, amid the mangled dead, his name still rings, however faint. For once spoken, the echo of a demon's name never truly fades. Return to the island, Losa, and listen. Listen for the key to your salvation. All right, I do sort of remember how to get the name, actually. We need a book. I'm pretty sure we picked it up earlier. It's one of the dozens of books we haven't looked at yet. But it has a specific name, so I'm pretty sure we picked it up. If not, we'll go look for it again. Not that one. No. No, 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 no. Bane might also have it. We'll see if it's not in this grouping of books. Okay. Bane, do you have the book I'm looking for? Nope. Nope, nope. Nope, nope. Maybe? Nope. Not that one. Maybe? No, that's not it either. The chains at least seem to be holding. There were some moments of concern, but the columns do their work. No soul shall escape this room. It's time. There isn't any more I can do. I can only pray it is enough. May the gods forgive me. I don't think that these are it. I'll just look at them anyways. The more I spend time here, the less sure I am of this. Where does the demon stop? Where does the victim begin? They certainly don't seem to like it when the body is threatened, though. Extreme precautions must be taken to ensure the security of the vaults. The demons seem at times on the verge of breaking through the chains. Should such an eventuality take place, we must prevent them from escaping. The levers that could open the doors must be broken. Also not what we're looking for. Alright, we're gonna go to Blood Moon Island. I know what we're looking for. There is an item that maybe we forgot in the archives. Unless I'm just like completely missing it. That's a crafting bible.
Or if I just rolled over it somewhere. Oh no, I definitely left it right on the table. The Archivist's Journal is what we need. The Dark Presence encroaches. Let this journal serve then as a monu or monument to the truth. A rare treasure in a world built on lies. To whomever reads this, please know. We only intended to protect, never harm. No priest I know would see the innocent suffer. Bloodwind's Island's purpose was to keep Rivalon safe. To exercise and cleanse. To relieve demon-infested souls whenever we might find them. Not every victim has been so easily purified. These are the unlucky ones. Destined to ride eternally. Vessels for demons too stubborn to return to the plane they call home. Elianessa was one such vessel. Deva brought the elf sorcerer here. She was limp, glass-eyed, silent. We all felt the presence when we drew near. We knew such darkness could never be cast out. Oops. Shoot. No. Never be cast out. She'd be banished to the vaults, along with the priest unlucky enough to shackle her. But it was never meant to be. Deva had tired of seeing brothers and sisters sacrificed. He performed the exorcism on Elianessa Elinus himself. In spite of our protests, in spite of our prayers, and so the shadow was released. Elianessa did not survive the exorcism, but I take some comfort in knowing an ancestor tree will grow where she fell. As for Deva, I do not know his fate. I rushed to the archive, knowing the presence must never be allowed to sing the hymn and enter the vaults, yet I have found but one where the rest may be. I can't be certain, so now I wait. The shadow will soon engulf me. Whatever Blood Moon Island might become, know what it once was, a temple of hope and healing. I pray this is how you remember us. Archivist Blair Cato. Saito? Whatever. Now we know the tree's name, Elianessa. Now I'm pretty sure we can talk to it and grab the name of the demon. We're probably not going to hit level 17 before we leave this act. But level 16 is a pretty decent level to get to. I think it's one level above this act's hardest enemies. I greet the spirit by name. Elianessa, I know your story. You're safe with me. A moment passes, then you feel it. Clarity. You speak my name. You know my torture. Please, don't judge me for the sickness my roots have spread. I can be free. My soul cleansed. I tell her of the Archivist's journal, and ask how she actually know it. I note that I've heard of the demon that inhabited her, yet I sense no overwhelming evil. The demon has gone, but I am still its slave. While it lives, I am bound by its shackles to this humble plane. Yet you awakened me from nightmare with a single utterance, my name, and I'm grateful for that. How amazing! That a name can wield so much power. Remember this lesson when you leave Blood Moon Island. The demon blackens another land now. It possesses the very doctor that liberated it. Speak its name, however, and you expose it. You weaken it. You'll know him when you find him. A doctor that accommodates a demon doesn't see patients, only victims. Destroy it, and you free me to the Hall of Echoes. Destroy it, and my roots taint this isle no longer. Now come closer. I'll say the demon's name only once. I step closer and shut my eyes. I'm ready. The spirit's voice is a harsh whisper. Adramalik. I ask her about the Archivist's journal and how she came to be possessed. Naivety. Stupidity. Call it what you want. I wished to put the source within me to good use, and demonology seemed as good a use as any. Silly me. I meant to summon an imp or two. Instead, I ended up hosting a damned archdemon. The roaring in my head. The craving for living flesh. Urges. Good gods, the urges to kill. To hurt. The stronger they became, the harder I fought. And at some point, I was just gone, deadened, but not dead. And then, awake, on an isle I'd never been, encircled by faces I'd never seen, 
watched by a man I'd never known. They called him Doctor. He shouted strange words, and the demon bellowed. Then, one by one, I... I assure that all is okay. It's safe to share the story with us. They fell. I watched my own hands slaughter them. I tried to resist, but I couldn't. And then a final roar, when the demon rushed away and into the only one still standing. The doctor. That was my last living memory. The demon may be gone, but its disease still infects my roots, birthing evil into the surrounding soil. While it lives, I am still its rotting servant. I've suffered. The Isle has suffered, but you can end it. I will. But first I have to go tell Jayon that I have the name. It's some of that sweet, sweet experience. Actually, we're kind of out of time, so we're going to tell Jayon in the next video, and then we will be going to where? Probably to take on... What's her name? Alice Allisonson? Alice, whatever her name is. The brutal fire sorceress that is in a pentagram of fire. And then I think we just have to do the final summoning for Mr. Shiva, or Siva. And I'm almost certain that's it. That's all we have to do. Oh, we have to kill the one troll on that bridge. That bridge? Whatever, whichever bridge it is. Uh, we've done all the paladin stuff. Yeah, I think we're just about done. We killed that demon. We got Elmira. Or Elmira. Alright, well, I'll see you guys in the next video. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below.